Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Ask an Expert session, how accurate documentation can help you reduce your legal risks. I'm Holly Gibson, Senior Product Specialist here at UDA Technologies. Hi, everyone. I'm Jordan Davis, also Senior Product Specialist here at UDA Technologies, and we are very excited. We have, uh, uh, I think, a wide range of topics uh, discussion uh, today. Uh, we're really excited to talk through how you can use construction online to really minimize or at least uh, reduce the amount of uh, risk exposure uh, your companies face as you go about your business, the day-to-day -day operations of running or managing a construction company. Yeah, there are so many benefits here uh, when you look at using construction online. Um, you know, we're really proud of the builders and contractors that we work with. We're working with really people um, who are the very best at what they do. You know, the, the best contractors in the world are using construction online. I love looking at the projects that you guys are working on or hearing about, you know, the latest uh, big thing or beautiful home that you're doing. Um, and what we see is that usually when we're look at, looking at how we can help contribute to your success, it's really about doing a few key things. One, helping your team communicate better. Two, helping you better plan for your projects, especially in the realm of profitability. Helping you grow and scale a business. And when you look at this, how to really protect your business as well. You know, you want to make sure that you're growing, but you want to grow in a way that's smart and, and protected. And getting your team in the good habits now of you know, documenting everything and uh, really using and leveraging construction online can reap huge rewards for your business. Um, we don't like to think about, you know, being disputed or challenged or anything like that, but it happens to just about everyone. So the more prepared you are, the better you'll be. So we're really excited to, to bring you this session today. Now, before we dive in, I would first like to welcome everyone if this is the first UDA Technologies webinar. We're so excited to have you. Now, of course, uh, for those uh, veterans or regulars who are joining us uh, as well, welcome again. Uh, for those of you who are new to a UDA Technologies webinar, we like to run interactive webinars. Holly and I really love engaging with your questions and making sure that, well, if there's something you're curious about or uh, you'd like to uh, tilt our attention towards as we work through the webinar, uh, we usually can find a way to work it in, and we absolutely love doing so. If you take a look at the GoToWebinar panel, you should see a space for questions. Uh, in that space, you can type and submit questions to us, and our colleague Sydney Dorsey, who's manning the keyboards on our side, will be flagging questions and really pointing them towards Holly and myself as we work through the webinar today. Uh, now first, we really would love to know uh, a little about yourselves, you know, uh, what caught your attention about the webinar today and what you're hoping to learn and a little about your company. So give us a shout out in the questions panel. And uh, yeah, Holly, without further ado, let's dive in. Well, let's go ahead and, and exactly, let's, let's dive into this topic, which is such a valuable one, but a bit of a sobering one when you first start to look. I know, Jordan, when we were doing the research for this session today, the one that I think really struck us the most was that only just over 36% of construction companies survive beyond their first five years. Now, I know from the clients that I work with and we, you know, we're helping people manage almost $100 billion in projects every day, 750,000 uh, people all over the world using construction online to drive that success. Um, and so I feel a real connection to my customers and I thought, wow, how tough is that? You know, only just over 36%. Now, of course, a lot of the people that we work with have already made it past that five-year mark. Um, some of you that we're working with are kind of in, in that first few years and really looking for ways to, you know, either way, protect the company. Um, so today, what we'd like to do is focus in on what what we have found and then what we have heard through discussions with all of you over the years as some of the really important and yet easy things that you can do to protect your company. So we'll be looking at the importance of project documentation, um, proper documentation for things like change orders, photographs of work completed on the job site, how you can use daily logs to get an accurate record um, of what's happening on the job site. In fact, that project logging um, feature alone, we see people using those daily logs and they'll we'll sometimes get people who call and say, hey, 
you know, can you help me filter my report a certain way? I'm going to need this documentation because of uh, some sort of, you know, challenge that they've run into or maybe dispute of some sort. So that, that daily log feature is crucial. Um, we'll also look at, you know, how you can avoid losing money on jobs with change orders because sometimes the sometimes the stakes are really high where you might find yourself, you know, kind of facing some sort of legal dispute. Sometimes it's a little bit lower stake in the beginning, you know, maybe maybe realizing at the end of the job a change order that wasn't billed and trying to figure out how, how you can do that and is the client going to push back and is that going to create a dispute. So, you know, how you can really use change orders in that way. Um, and then, of course, the centralized correspondence tracking and some of the other communication tools to really keep an accurate record of the communication that's happening around the project. You know, so much of that happens through email and texting that it can be really difficult to go back and find that information a couple of years down the road. And so we'll be looking at how Construction Online's communication tools can help you be able to find that information a lot more easily should you ever need it. Um, and this can make a big difference for your company. I think one of the most impactful things a customer has told me about over the last um, I don't know, year or so, I've had a conversation with someone who had actually just kind of finished up a, um, a, a, a lawsuit and he had really, uh, you know, not, not done anything wrong. You know, the, the project had been, had been one that was, you know, from a construction standpoint going well. Um, but there was a challenge and, um, he, you know, he had found himself in, a situation where he just did not have any documentation and said that he felt really kind of realizing in that moment that the person with the most paperwork was going to win and that that wasn't him, you know, that there was no documentation there and he was facing, you know, someone that did have sort of a pile of papers. He may not have even been accurate, but there was no no way to challenge. So I really sort of felt on a... On a um, a certain level, just, you know, how much that was impacting, you know, him and his business. And so I feel um, really strongly about how much these tools can, can really benefit my customers. Well, and not no. only can they really benefit our customers, but it's, it's simplified, right? There's, there's no need to hunt down paperwork that's buried inside of a folder, inside of a filing cabinet that's been gathering dust for five plus years, right? I think what we're going to be covering today is going to look uh, almost too easy uh, in some cases, um, especially when we when we start looking at uh, really what all creating a daily log entails or, or really how how you actually put a change order together inside of construction online. But that's really uh, that's really the benefit of, of construction online is how simple and straightforward it is to take care of the documentation tasks that really everyone should be doing. It is. It's it's such a straightforward thing to do. Um, and provide such a huge reward, you know, and, and I think with, when you think about this topic, you know, everyone does, you know, a lot of people, especially those just starting out, which kind of contributes to that number we saw, really wants to think that that can't or won't necessarily happen. But construction companies face a lot of risk and there are a few challenges that are pretty unique to construction. Um, you know, when you look at kind of the different angles and, and risks that are faced by the business, you have... Um, you know, legal challenges and disputes, you have things like that, which could come from uh, disagreements over the financial aspect of the job, um, who's owed money, who needs to get paid, um, you know, a, a contractor walks off the job site or a subcontractor walks off the job site repeatedly without finishing work, but if that's not documented, then suddenly they're demanding payment or sometimes it's a dispute with the investor or owner of, you know, the building. Um, sometimes something happens a couple of years later, you know, so that's the other thing that can, can happen is that there's, you know, the, the risk doesn't end just because the project is finished usually. So there's, um, you know, a period of time or liability where, you know, if something happens, it's easy to say, oh, well, it just wasn't built correctly. And if you don't have, you know, the, the proof on your side, um, those are risk as well. And then there's the client relationship. You know, I know on the, especially on the residential side, but sometimes on the commercial side as well, um, you know, often it's an emotional process for the, the homeowner. You know, they, they, it's a high stakes thing for them. They're really, um, you know, excited about the project, but often, 
um, don't understand the all of the finances or all of the work that goes into making that dream a reality. And so, um, you know, it could be innocent to start maybe expectations about how much something's going to cost leads to, you know, kind of question marks about change orders. So we've just kind of found that documenting accurately from the very beginning can kind of protect from all of those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we have a few key areas that we want to, to dive into and cover. Um, and really the first one is um, kind of looking at just the daily logs. You know, I think that that is one of the places that we see um, a huge amount of protection. And like you said, Jordan, it's so easy. So we're just going to jump into one of our projects, show you guys um, some of the things that you can do here with daily logs and also talk through a couple of additional scenarios. Now, what I've done here is just jumped into my 71st Street uh, project. And so I'm going to head over to the daily logging area. Now, as we look at this, you can see that hmm, whoever's managing this project hasn't done a ton of logs yet. So either it just started up or we need to help them um, log more information on a daily basis. And so that's one of the things that I wanted to cover with you guys as well as we're getting started. So when we look at how to put this in place for your company, um, one of the common questions that we'll get is, mm, but what, what if my team forgets to do it? Or, um, well, they forgot to do it during the workday and so they just texted me the information or, you know, kind of similar challenges with just getting um, maybe the team on board if this is the first time you're asking them to do like a digital daily log. Um, one of the things I always recommend, Jordan, is to take a look at the logging reminders. Um, so this is just an easy way as you start to use project logs to make sure that those are being done every day. It's a smart reminder system. So if I need for Jordan to create this documentation for me on a daily basis, I can go ahead and set up a reminder for him. Um, we're going to check for that every weekday at, say, 5 p.m. And if his logs aren't done, it's just going to send him a friendly reminder to get that done for me um, at the end of the day there. Yeah, and you'll see there's two options. You can send an email, but I think the more impactful option here is if you also have, let's say in my case, you know, my contact information and my phone number, uh, Construction Online will also send a reminder text message my way. Uh, which could be a, a great prompt, especially at the end of a, let's say, a pretty grueling work day, especially as uh, we start ramping into those uh, hot summer days for um, a number of our different clients. Uh, having, a, having a reminder drop in, uh, if you haven't submitted information, especially a, a smart reminder, not one that you'll eventually become desensitized to, uh, is a really good way to, to start encouraging your team members uh, to actually submit their daily logs through the construction online platform instead of texting it to you, which if they're sending in and there's, if they're taking the time to actually type out and submit uh, information about what actually happened on the job site that day, you know, on their phone, there really isn't an excuse, right? The, the entire uh, message that they typed out could easily be put into the Construction Online mobile app, which uh, is going to give you the same uh, logging uh, elements here. Uh, the most common of which that people will use is, is going to be the work log um, to really document what work has been done on site. Mm -hmm. Or what work hasn't been done on mm -hmm. site. So what you'll notice as we start to look at daily logging is that it is a, what I like to think of as a self-organizing daily log system. So um, the idea here isn't that someone has to remember at the end of the day everything that they want to say and how to organize it, it kind of based on the different log types really prompts you um, to not forget to, to include a certain section. So, you know, most days are going to include work logs and some general project notes. Some days are also going to include things like visitors on the job site that need to be documented, um, delivery logs. So we want to document receipt of materials on the job site, maybe if something was damaged or arrived too late or too early in the day, something like that. Um, anything else that might have caused a delay, we've seen all sorts of, um, you know, kind of interesting things looking looking at and kind of helping you guys with your accounts. There's all sorts of things that can create delays on construction projects. So as we step through each of these, you know, the work log, you're right, Jordan, is one of the most common because it's something that's often done 
every day. Um, and so to do that, it's really easy. We're just going to enter the name of the resource, which is usually a person, but it could be, um, you know, a crew or a company, you know, however you guys like to do your documentation. Um, I'm going to say that this is Ted. So that's my resource. We want to document whether he showed up to the job site. So one of the things that I see pretty frequently is, um, you know, work logs, not only that document work, but that show that someone in fact did not show up to the job site that day. So you want to have that documented well. In this case, we're going to say that Ted did show up. Um, if it's a crew, you can enter the number of workers and you can also note the number of hours that that person worked. So we're going to say that Ted was on site for seven and a half hours um, and we'll say that he is our drywall contractor. Now I can go ahead and assign a cost code here if I like, as well as a potential cost impact of this work log. And then we can also assign a trade if we want. Next comes the fun part, which is really just, you know, a brief description of what was done. And what I really love to do here is also just attach photos. Um, so you could just say, you know, started um, drywall on first floor or whatever it was that got done that day. And then go ahead and attach some photos to that, which um, to me is a really important aspect of the project log. I love to encourage people to use pictures, um, whether as part of the logging or as part of just their overall project documentation. I do think one of the risks that you guys face a little bit um, in construction is that very often, um, you know, the finished product, which is what we all see when the project is done, um, is so wonderful and it's so beautiful, but it really doesn't represent all the work that went into that building. And so a lot of what's happening um, from an engineering or construction perspective is actually behind those walls after they go up. And so having the picture is pretty important because it's it's not usually practical to go into the building and pull the walls out to see, you know, maybe how the electrical work was done. But if you have photographs of that, you know, you've really got yourself covered. Um, so here I'm just gonna go to my uh, job site photos folder and pull in some pictures to attach to this log. Now I know Jordan, a lot of people of course are entering their daily logs through the construction online mobile app on the job site as well. Yeah, that's right. And not only can they pull pictures from their own phone, let's say camera roll or photo albums, uh, but they could take pictures right on the spot when they're putting together the daily log. Let's say they finished typing out uh, the narrative portion of the log uh, and they're moving into taking a few pictures for just evidence purposes or really just documenting what was done, uh, documenting what was not done in some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's as straightforward as it could possibly be. There's no there's not even really a need in a lot of cases to go and hunt down the photos if you're taking them on the spot. Um, it's uh, as straightforward as we, uh, at this point in time at least, can possibly make it. Uh, there's also a, a, an interesting way to actually route into making a daily log uh, in the mobile app there's actually a camera button that's found across the, uh, the toolbar at the, uh, the bottom of the app uh, that lets uh, different uh, users not only take pictures, but once they've actually taken the pictures, uh, they can then use the pictures to form the basis of creating uh, a daily log as well. So there's, there's two different routes into making the logs, right? And the more common approach is, is going to be uh, writing the log first. Uh, and then moving into the um, you know, photo attachment view. Uh, however, once people start to find out, uh, Holly, that they can take pictures and then make a log from the photos, I think they're going to start moving that route uh, more often than not. Yeah, that's right. So we'll show you guys a little bit about what that, um, about what that looks like in the mobile app in just a moment. Um, before we take a look at this from a mobile perspective, um, a couple of other things to note about these logs as they're being posted, and that's whether you're doing this from construction online or from the mobile app in the field, is that, you know, you'll notice I've attached some pictures here. These are also going to feed into another tool that we're going to look at in a few moments, which is your project photo stream. So there's nothing special that you have to do. You've got your pictures here. They're also going to show up in your main uh, photos area for this project. So we're going to automatically go ahead and put them there for you. And you can also see them in a special logging photo stream, which is going to be um, just right here as part of that logging feature. So that's something that you can, let's see, we'll go ahead and just look at, say, maybe the last 30 days 
we'll apply that and be able to see the pictures that we've added in here. Now from here, of course, we can open the pictures up. We can, you know, add a markup or documentation to them. So you've got some, some different things that you can do here. Outside of the work log, of course, you also have the ability with project logging to document equipment or material usage. Um, and so that's just going to be where you can record, you know, what, what piece of equipment it was, how many hours it was used, if it's a rental, what the hourly rate is, um, and be able to record that information. Now, I've worked with a few clients who um, have ended up working with uh, not maybe like the, let's say, not the highest quality or the best equipment rental companies in the world. Um, things like sending out duplicate pieces of equipment and double billing for the same mm -hmm. equipment on site or claiming damages uh, to the equipment that actually never happened while the company uh, renting the tools, uh, you know, actually was working with it. And so sometimes what I'll recommend is, is actually taking photos of the equipment uh, when it first arrives on site, making sure that your team is actually documenting when it arrives on site, what company it's being rented from, and really the condition that it's in before they even start using it, just because you never know, right? Mm -hmm. There could be an unscrupulous company out there that's trying to squeeze a few extra dollars out of you, uh, because that, that really is, unfortunately, sometimes the way of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, the same thing with, you know, your delivery logs is, as well. So you have, you know, equipment. I know a lot of, of you guys receive deliveries to the job site, and so... Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's perfect and sometimes you get things that are, you know, not what you ordered or more than what you ordered, or you need to be able to compare what you're billed for with what was on that, you know, packing, packing slip that arrived with your, um, with your delivery there. Um, so it can really just kind of nip. I think one of the, the things as we look at, especially at how this applies to risk, um, reduction of risk or reduction of the likelihood for a dispute is that if you have everything documented, um, if there, a question does arise, it's going to be very clear that, you know, we are dealing with a company that has everything documented. They know their stuff. We ask a question. They're able to pull that information up and produce it. And that's a lot different than saying, mm, well, I don't know, but I don't think that's how it happened. You know, so it's, it's a different type of documentation there. Now, one other thing that really, again, affects almost everyone in the construction world is, of course, weather. And you'll notice that with Construction Online, as we have set up our project here, our 71st Street project, we did go ahead and activate the weather tracking, um, which is wonderful because that's going to automatically log the weather for us at five different points throughout the day. Um, and I can really come back at any time and pull even just a weather report for my project over the last, say, month or so if, I, if I'd like to see that. So we're doing a lot of tracking and, and a lot of that work for you on the backside. But you can, of course, you know, record how this specific weather impacted what was happening on the job site. And that's really what your observed weather log is for. You can note when the delay, the weather delay starts, when it ends, and then some additional notes about how that impacted the work for that day. And of course, documenting all of this information uh, is to build a case for, or to, to be able to show, uh, in a lot of cases, uh, whether delays outside of expected norms or expected conditions uh, for the period of time of the year. Uh, this, this is a pretty common uh, situation. I, I, you know, speaking with a lot of clients, uh, over this past winter, especially in the Midwest, there was an unusual amount of snow uh, that ended up uh, delaying a lot of projects further than they expected in a lot of cases, which was fairly surprising. Um, but the companies that had actually done their due diligence and had documented the delays properly had evidence to be able to present that, well, these delays really were out of our hands mm -hmm. in, in a lot of cases. Um, but that, that, that actually was a very common uh, issue for a lot of our companies in the Midwest this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, well, every, I think every region kind of has its own uh, set of weather challenges, you know, in some places it's, you know, hurricanes. wind, some, some case, yeah, here we get tornadoes and hurricanes a good bit. Uh, we'll, we'll see an effect of that. Some places it's, you know, it's snow or cold. So whatever that is for you, there's usually some impact, um, to be had from the weather. Um, and there's also usually part of that built into contracts that, you know, you'll have 
for the projects that you're doing. You know, in many cases, um, you know, of course, everyone knows that no one can help the weather. It's really just a matter of having it documented so that that we know that that's what it is. And in particular, if you have contracts where, you know, at the end of the contract, I've worked with many contractors on commercial jobs where they're really liable for, in some cases, you know, a couple of thousand dollars a day or more that the project is delivered beyond the, the original agreed upon date. Um, now, of course, exceptions are built in for things like, you know, extreme weather events, but you do want to make sure that you are tracking those. Now, one more quick thing before we go to the app as we're looking at project logging, and I think this is probably one of my favorite things, is that, you know, really getting the logs in is easy. So you guys see the different types of logs that you can do. We'll take a look at how to do that on the phone. Um, but the payoff is really, you know, a couple of things that start to happen. As those project logs are being entered, you know, you can even receive an immediate notification. You can really be receiving a news feed in real time of what's happening on the job site. And then if you need to go back, especially, you know, for documentation purposes and find the information, it's really easy to do that with the variety of reports that we give you here. Yeah, now, of course, since we were just coming off of the weather uh, delay theme, uh, it's very easy, for instance, to pull or compile all of our observed weather delays in one report, just using, well, the observed weather report. Uh, this lets us adjust or define the uh, the date range for the report. Very useful in case you didn't want to pull all of the logs, but you mm -hmm. wanted to pick a specific period of time uh, to document. Of course, if we're counting how many weather delay days there were or how many hours were delayed from weather, we might want to set this, of course, all the way back to the beginning of the project. Uh, but if we needed to pick a specific range, we could do that as well. That's fairly straightforward. And you can do this with any of the log types. So a lot of a lot of times when you're coming in and pulling the reports, you can certainly do what I think of as just a daily, which is you know a combined log report. Maybe you're just going to do it for one day or one week, just for record keeping purposes. We want that on a PDF, and you'll include maybe everything on that. Um, but a lot of times, especially once the project is over, or maybe you're halfway into it, you need to go back and maybe like the example, Jordan, that you mentioned earlier, maybe you need to go back and pull logs, all, all the logs related to a certain equipment rental company that you, that you rent from. Um, you can do that. You can say, well, show me all the logs related to this particular vendor from the beginning of the year up until right now. Um, or if you need to go back and pull a work log for a particular resource across a, a period of a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you can do that as well. So we give you more ways to use this information um, beyond, beyond what you're really starting with here. So, so, so much that you can do with the logging reports. Yeah, with just a few filters applied as well. I mean, this can apply to uh, tracking down and finding out uh, maybe a trend that you're noticing with a specific subcontractor. Uh, maybe they're maybe they're claiming things are happening on the job site that are not. Mm -hmm. uh, you could pull a list of every single log related to that specific uh, company or, or person, individual, whoever it might be, uh, and, and pull it out into a, a really easily understandable report. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, of course, this is going to pull in the, uh, the photo images that we've taken as well. Um, we're not having to do any special manipulation or drag and dropping or anything like that. Um, the amount of time saved just by pulling this information out and putting it into a presentable format uh, is already considerable. Uh, but you can take these documents and then use them as needed for different proceedings. Um, hopefully you won't have to, but just, you know, in case you do, um, it's very simple to pull this type of report mm -hmm. from Construction Online. Yeah, I love that the photographs and attachments are shown. You know, it adds an additional layer to the report that I think is really helpful, especially when you think about it from a documentation standpoint. You'll notice as well that when I start to pull a report that I do have the option to select a project or I can do this across all projects. So, you know, great to be able to to kind of go across the projects and see maybe what's happening from a resource standpoint or drill in um you know jordan like you mentioned there's just there's so many possible combinations here that could be useful but i did want you guys to see you know what the report looks like because this is um you know it's going to come out it's not just living in construction online you know when you need it 
in a PDF that you can take with you and um, and have all the that detail right in front of you you've got it here as well now we have had a couple of people ask about you know what does this look like from the mobile app um, and I know Jordan you are really excited to also talk a little bit about the photo stream today so I think it would be great to go into the app we'll take a look at the process of entering the logs there and then maybe jump back and take a look at well now okay how's that going to show up in construction online so of course you know you guys are depending on um you know your your teams in the field so i'm just gonna open this up a little bit what i've done is just shared my phone screen in addition to my construction online screen so we'll go ahead and pull that up in the middle here now you'll notice that I have access really to all of my construction online um, features, you know, right here in, in the mobile app. The daily logs are going to be visible to me here. So if I wanna go into one of my projects and just look at the daily logs from the mobile device, I can do that as well. You'll notice there's just some blue dots indicating where logs have been entered. Looks like I wanted to document my use of the keyboard that day, which I'm was working very hard there on my computer. So, you know, sometimes you want to document different things there, but um, what we'll go ahead and do now is just create a new log. So if I wanted to go into say maybe that 71st Street project that we've been working on here, I can go just right into daily logs. I'm going to, again, be able to see the logs that I have. Just tap that orange button and that's going to give me the ability to choose which type of log I'm entering. So if I want to go ahead and do like say maybe some quick project notes, uh, you know, I can do that here. So I'm just going to, you know, type in my notes. Hit save and I'm done. Like we mentioned earlier, this is compatible with like a talk to text. So, you know, while I'm I typed it in here. We could also just turn our microphone on on the phone and talk into the phone. It's going to record the information there. Now, Jordan, you had mentioned that you really love the photo or camera option first. Now, I can attach pictures to my daily logs as I'm creating them, but if you just want to take some pictures, you'll notice that this camera option is always going to be right here at the bottom. So when you're using the mobile app, we want that camera to be easily accessible to you. So if I go ahead and turn that on right now, um, we'll just take a quick picture of our desk, hit next, and now I can decide what I'm going to, oh, disconnected my phone. Sorry about that, you guys. So what happens is when I tap next, it's going to give me an option to choose what I'd like to do with this picture. Do I want to just upload it to the project? I can choose that top option. Or if I want to use this photograph to go ahead and make a daily log, I can choose the middle option. Again, choose which type of log we're going to create. So this time maybe we'll say we'll do a quick work log. And then from there, all I'm going to do is just fill out the form and go ahead and enter the information for my work notes, you know, really the same as I would do normally. And then that photograph is, is going to be automatically attached. Um, so an easy way to get the logs done from your mobile device here, or a really easy way to go ahead and just take project photos. Um, so Jordan, tell me why I know that you, you were saying earlier that you thought the photo stream was something that um, you just really couldn't wait to have a chance to talk about today just because of how much value, you know, we've seen and um, how popular it's been with clients that we've worked with. Tell me a little bit about what you're seeing there. Yeah, absolutely. So PhotoStream is one of my, I think, favorite features inside of Construction Online for really one reason. Uh, a long time ago at this point now, I think it was maybe uh, a year and a half ago, uh, I was working with... Uh, a client who'd been using our platform for a while uh, and they were looking for a way to be able to almost list all of their photos in a project in chronological order and then be able to select a time frame or a time period so they could see all the photos they've uploaded within a specific span of weeks uh, and you know I started digging into this and trying to find out well what what's the reasoning behind this right like why are they trying to get this type of functionality in place uh, of course, I passed along the feedback, right? And, and funny story, we were actually working on PhotoStream at the time. Uh, and so he ended up explaining to me, well, you know, there might, uh, questions might arise or disputes might arise about 
how certain things were laid out uh, before we started pouring concrete or all these you said before the walls started going up and started becoming you know enclosed so you can actually see through them anymore um, and well you know we might not know exactly what day uh, we did the work in question but we do know that it was in maybe let's say February or just towards the tail end of January right uh, and they were hoping to use that type of, of date selection or date filtering tool to essentially rewind the project backwards in time so they could peer into the work that they'd done uh, to date. Now, of course, what something that was really supporting this is that they took hundreds and hundreds of site photos um, every day. Uh, and they were doing a very good job of making sure they were uploading those pictures into the projects. Uh, but they were, they just were having a tough time sorting through and they were doing, putting in a ton of extra work to make albums per week so they could go back and look inside of an album. Uh, well, this happened to coincide with our work on PhotoStream at the time, uh, which really served to automatically order the, pro the project photos from wherever throughout the project it was uploaded, whether that was a daily log or uploaded into the uh, photo album inside of the project's files area, whatever it might be. Uh, we were working on a way to pull all those photos together and then display them in a timeline in a reverse chronological order. Uh, so after really, you know, feeling out uh, what uh, we could do for the the date selection tool, we ended up uh, moving forward and, and adding it into the platform along with the uh, contact selection tool, so we could filter and see who uploaded the photos. Uh, and it really came together perfectly. Um, and so. You know, we were actually able to talk with them about how they had used the tool the week that it had been released uh, to potentially head off a, an argument that could have led to a dispute on the project about the certain way that the, um, I think it was something to do with the, the plumbing, the way the plumbing was set up, to make sure that they did it correctly. Uh, and they were able to do this just by going and looking through their photos and finding exactly where they'd taken a picture overhead to see exactly how everything was laid out. Uh, which you can't do, Holly, unless you, maybe you have x-ray goggles or something like that, uh, which yeah, most definitely. people don't have. <laughs> definitely. Well, there's so much power. You know, I guess there's a reason that they say a picture's worth a thousand words because it really, really does provide just a level of detail that can't be captured any other way. Um, and this is one of the things that makes construction online different is the photo stream view because like you mentioned, Jordan, and what we've kind of found is that, you know, if, when people are doing a good job here, they, they may be adding hundreds of pictures per week mm -hmm. at least. I mean, I've, I've worked with clients who will add, you know, over 100 pictures just in one day because when you're thinking about it, not just from a perspective of, well, I'm going to take a couple of cool pictures of a construction project, but like, okay, I'm documenting. Um, then you start to zoom in and take pictures of, you know, the, the details there, things that you might want to be able to go back and look at in a little bit more detail. And that adds up really quickly. So Construction Online does a great job of handling that volume of projects. And one thing that's really unique to Construction Online is that photo stream that you can get back really at any point and say, well, I think it was part of a project log. So let me let me look at those types of pictures, or I think that Jordan was the one that posted them, or I'm pretty sure we worked on that in February. Let's go back and find it. Um, so it just makes it so much easier to do that. Now, of course, the photos can be at, organized into things like albums. You can do things like edit or mark them up to draw attention to a certain area. So if there's something that, if you took a picture with a particular reason in mind and want to uh, you know, maybe circle something on the photo or draw an arrow to it. Um, those editing tools are available here. So if we wanted to make sure that we're calling attention in this picture to, I don't know, this wiring here or something, you can just basically draw right on the sheet um, or right on your picture, um, save your changes, and that's going to automatically be reflected on your photograph there as well. So let's talk a little bit about, um, we've kind of gone through looking at some of the documentation that comes from your team on site, you know, things like the pictures, things like the daily logs. Um, let's, let's talk about some of the documentation on the financial side. Jordan, I know the, the change order management is something that, again, you know, sometimes we'll want some of our favorite types of conversations will come from a client who will say, 
oh my gosh, you won't believe what just happened. And I think that one thing alone just paid for like my next 10 years of construction online. Like, you know, we had this situation. So we get to hear all sorts of wonderful stories. And I feel like a, a good many of those come from that change order side of things. You know, it seems like a universal uh, thing that builders and contractors have to deal with. There's always going to be change on the project. Um, can you talk a little bit about the importance of documentation? What, what role does that play for us here? Well, you know, I feel like there's a couple of classes or a couple of types of construction companies that I've worked with. Uh, there are those that go in um, guns blazing. Uh, they start working. They hear the clients or, or maybe there's a situation on the project that should be documented with a change order, but they just want to keep moving. They want to stay on task. They want to get it done. Uh, so they start the work. They order the materials. Uh, they start arranging people to come out and, and say perform the work that would be entailed or documented in the change order without actually one documenting the request period for a change to the, the scope of work uh, two they don't document how much it's going to cost uh, and three they don't have any type of approval or signature from the person paying for the project that says yes I will agree to pay this much money for this uh, this additional work to be performed for the project um, those are the clients that, that make me very nervous because there are other clients that I'll talk to that I'll put in group B uh, who either have done the show in the past or they have friends in the industry uh, who were a little fast and loose when it came to documenting and, and receiving approvals on, on their change orders uh, and their business went under. You know, I think that this is one of the, uh, while this isn't the number one risk for construction companies in, in terms of maintaining and keeping their business, that's actually I. Uh, uh, I think it's growing too fast is surprisingly the number one reason. Um, but it is a very, very uh, common scenario that I've heard from our clients that uh, they didn't document change orders on a project, they went to collect payment for the project at the end of the job, and, well, there was nothing legally binding for the work to be performed outside of the original contract. Uh, there was no types of uh, protection or really anything in favor for the contractor. Um, and they had to uh, eat the cost of the work that they did, the materials that they buy, the people that they paid. Um, and it was a really unfortunate and unpleasant experience. Um, if that hasn't happened to you, that either means that you are doing a very good job at uh, taking the time to build and then receive approval for your change orders, or you're playing against time. Uh, this is one of the most unnecessary risks, I feel like, that construction companies can take uh, whenever they're managing projects is just doing work for something that is not you know, within the bounds of the contract that should be documented with a change order. And there's really no excuse for, for not doing it in construction online because you can build a change order from your phone in a lot of cases. Now, you might need to put in additional work to really price out different elements of the change order, but you can at least initiate the process from your phone and have the discussion with the person who has the approval uh, authority for a project to actually you know, move forward with a change order to say, well, before we begin work or before we begin anything at all, we'll need to document this with a change order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, one of the things, too, that will happen is that sometimes there's a, a communication element there as well where um, changes might be requested on the job site. Um, and need to get communicated back to the, you know, it's kind of a, a chain, it's it's that game of telephone, right? You know, it's kind of documenting what the client's asking for while it's still fresh. That can be done right on the mobile app, even if that's something that needs to be costed out a little bit more so in the office. You can always use that draft mode there. The client won't see it, um, but it gives you a place to go ahead and start setting that up. Um, and, and you can see how easy it was for me to make this as Jordan was talking. You really, to create the change order, we're really just filling out the change order form. So again, it's it's easy to do. There's no reason not to do it. Now, uh, sometimes I've talked to a couple of clients, we'll call them Group C, Jordan, um, who have told me, uh, and they were, they were both residential builders, so this seems to happen a good bit more on the residential side, but they've said, you know, Holly, sometimes we we do things for our clients we'll allow them to make little changes or we'll we'll sometimes even set aside a couple of thousand dollars in the budget to allow for for a couple of scope changes or they'll sometimes do do that in some sort of complimentary way 
um, just to, to keep the client's loyalty and good graces and uh, things like that. But what I always tell them is, so listen, your your relationship with the, your clients and your customers, um, if you found something that works for you and it's occasionally you feel like in your best interest to do something and and not charge extra, that's, that's certainly something that you can do. But I would say document it anyway. Even if it's a change order with a zero dollar, if it's a change in scope to what you're doing, it's good to have that documented because at the beginning it may seem inconsequential, but by the time you've done that five times, you know, you want to have a record of, of everything that's being done there. And really the goal with change orders, the, the, I guess the clients I've worked with who are most successful um, in managing those, almost think of them, uh, again, speci- especially on that residential side or some of the light commercial work as upgrade opportunities more than anything else. You know, sometimes changes come because of unforeseen changes, but sometimes, you know, the change orders can be a great, you know, a great thing. You just have to have those documented well. Yeah, well, and this this is not just true for uh, residential builders, though. I do really want to point out uh, there is a there is, and this is just one story, but I'm sure the story is going to echo true for uh, either those of you who've had this happen before on a commercial project or just you've heard of, of this happening to somebody that you know. Um, I, I was hearing from one of our clients that were working on a warehouse, uh, and the, the warehouse, uh, it's a fairly large uh, scale warehouse, and um, part of the initial plans had certain structures that were out of code and they had to completely cut through uh, some different uh, support beams and, and kind of restructure the way uh, that the warehouse was being built. Um, of course, this was a scope change. They had mm-hmm. to actually have this approved by the client because it was going to cost an extra 150 plus thousand dollars. Well, they come to the end of the project and guess what? Um, they had intended on filling this information out, but it ended up on a piece of paper in somebody's truck somewhere uh, that never made its way back to the office. Uh, they never actually sent the paperwork over to the client. And uh, when they sent the bill to the client, uh, they, they just were laughs off the property, basically. Uh, because, well, they hadn't actually approved the cost. And they did the work anyways. They paid the subcontractors to come out and do the work. Uh, and they had to eat the cost. And it ended up where the job just uh, was just barely profitable. Uh, but it all could have been avoided with, let's say, five minutes of work on the front end to put the draft change order in place and then follow up with the office to make sure that they saw it. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some interesting things you can do to to nudge the office staff uh, who might need to uh, price out or, or, uh, you know, receive quotes for additional work to be performed. Uh, Inside of the notification settings, uh, you can actually have key employees receive notifications anytime a change order is made or anytime a change order is approved or rejected, both internally or by clients. Uh, now, this is a really, really helpful tool for those who might want to keep an eye on the pulse of a project and make sure that change orders of any kind are, are being handled properly. And this will trigger for company users, regardless of, of whether or not the change order is set to a draft status, to make sure that your company is, is still notified of, of when a change order is added. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of times there are different people involved there that Mm -hmm. that need to make that happen. Um, And so one of the things that this does is makes that part of the communication much easier. Yeah, well, and it takes off some of the pressure uh, for uh, field staff to constantly follow up and and really to, you know, ring the bell on a change order. Uh, Now, they probably should still send a message, something like uh, maybe even sending a chat message in um, <clears throat> using Envoy chat, but it does take some of the pressure off to at least make sure some message is sent internally. Now, just like we looked at with the project logs, you can also do some really nice reporting for your change order. So, you know, part of it is um, having the change orders documented, um, having those signatures, you know, one thing that um, that you can do with the change order. Of course, once you create it, there's really a couple of different ways that the the next couple of steps can be handled. You can, of course, if you're using um, Construction Online's client link portal for your clients and owners, what will happen is when the change order is ready for them, they're going to get a notification as well that says there's a change order that needs your attention. They'll be able to go click the link in their email, come right into their portal, 
and mark the change order as approved. And when they do that, it's going to prompt them to sign with their finger or with their mouse or, or whatever they're using. So that digital signature is going to be, you know, they're going to be prompted. Now, as soon as they approve it, again, back to that communication, you will be notified that the change order has been approved. Um, so you'll, you'll get that email. And then you'll also notice here on the change order itself in Construction Online that you can see in the history that I created the change order here on this day. And I can see that Polly, my client, approved it later that same afternoon. So we do keep a timeline of that for you. Um, if you need to print the change order or get perhaps, uh, you know, like signatures on a piece of paper, you can do that as well. So you can run the change order as a PDF put it in someone's hands and have them sign off on it there. Um, and if you're using the Construction Online mobile app, you can just pull it up on the phone, mark it as approved, and they can sign for it right on the phone. So we try to give you several different ways to capture that documentation of approval from the client. Um, because in the end, the goal is to, of course, get paid and protect your business. I mean, you guys work so hard out there, so you wanna make sure that you're really protecting your work and protecting your business, but it only takes an extra second or two to get that signature, but it makes a big difference in terms of your documentation and protection. Now, speaking of documentation, Jordan, I know the last thing that we wanted to highlight um, in construction online from a documentation perspective is the communication tools, in particular things like um, things like RFIs and, and what that looks like. And um, what do you see as the, the impact of communication in on a construction project from this uh, risk protection angle? Well, I mean, when it comes to requests for information, uh, really this one tool can, can really cover pretty much all stakeholders in a project uh, from all sorts of different, uh, I would say just risks uh, in terms of making sure that, well, uh, when a question was asked, that it's documenting who the question was asked to, what potential impacts uh, the, you know, the answers to the question could have for a project, uh, and really just making sure that uh, the fact that the company or, or members of the company are doing their due diligence, uh, you know, the fact that they're actually logging and, and tracking that information can really protect companies from uh, all sorts of problems down the road. Uh, it's almost impossible to claim that a company uh, ignored certain uh, specifications or ignored certain problems inherent in the initial design of a project if there's a, an easily traceable log of questions about, let's say, a certain element of a plan. Uh, let's say that um, they had questions about certain ways that, uh, I don't know, a certain lighting fixture was uh, set up to be added or, or installed. Uh, that just didn't make any sense with the rest of the plans. Uh, I've seen RFIs sent out asking about uh, trying to run conduit through a, a solid concrete like, structural pillar that probably shouldn't have a hole drilled through it or really anything uh, placed inside of it. But really, Construction Online does a great job of not only allowing uh, users to build and send RFIs, but it also tracks the responses. And it's, it's really easy to receive responses for requests for information as well. Uh, you can see that when you're actually creating a new request for information, for instance, uh, it's, it's almost like filling out a form in a lot of ways. Uh, this is something that a lot of companies will want to standardize when I, when I first start working with them, is that you know, they'll want a way for their team members to be able to consistently generate uh, similar correspondence uh, without having to follow or find a specific form inside of some type of folder somewhere inside of the project. Uh, and they want to be able to receive replies very quickly. Uh, transitioning requests for information away from something like a, like a paper document or a, even in some cases an email thread which could get lost if someone's computer crashes or if something happens to the email account uh, into Construction Online uh, really alleviates trying to track down the information after the fact. It's stored inside of the project. Uh, and really it gives employees a consistent method or a consistent way to generate a request for information the same way every single time. It also simplifies receiving replies as well because the person responding can just click reply from their email inbox and uh, send a response directly back in with attachments. So if they needed to send back some type of uh, admitted document or uh, even just a document to demonstrate what they're trying to say in their response, they can do so 
without really any extra effort. Yeah, so when these get sent out, and I'm actually receiving notifications here on my phone as I'm creating these, so when you're creating your RFIs, you'll you know fill out the form. So again, that part's easy. We're gonna hit create and send email, so that's going to go out. And you'll notice that in this case, um, whoever this RFI is sent to, all I have to do is just reply to their regular email the responses are captured here for you. Now messages works that way as well. Um, so do know that if, you know, some things will require RFIs, some things are maybe a little bit less formal communication, but you can still capture that information as well. And it's always going to be organized around this project. So when you think about how your outlook might be organized or trying to update a spreadsheet constantly, this really does a lot of that work for you here. So we have created the RFIs. The RFIs have been sent. They've been logged. Responses are going to automatically be captured. And because I've assigned due dates to the RFIs, um, I'll be able to come back and see really quickly, you know, what needs my attention? Is something overdue? Who's responding? Who's not? Um, and really keep things moving along well for the project as it's progressing. But again, from a documentation standpoint, I can then, when I need to print this RFI, I'm not just printing the one that I originally created and say, well, here, you know, I did send this out. I'm saying, here's the RFI and here is all five responses that were received. Who sent, who responded, what did they say, and what conclusion was reached? So you have all the documentation needed just in one easy package. And that's right. And, and additionally, if you do need to provide an RFI log or a submittal log, for instance, at the conclusion of a project. Uh, it's really simple to do that as well. You can actually just quickly generate uh, this exact table in, some, in a spreadsheet directly from the RFIs menu here as well as inside of the communication reports menu. So a ton of great documentation and I think as we wrap up, you know, Jordan, um, as, as you look at construction online, really so many of the tools that are available um, for you guys to work with can act as that protectant for your business. I mean, really the entire platform um, that you have access to in construction online, you could take really just about any one of those and apply the same, same kind of line of thinking to it. I mean, there are, like we talked about in the beginning, there's a lot of risk in, involved sometimes in doing construction. So documentation in every area is important. Um, a well-documented estimate, well-documented changes, um, a schedule and updates to that schedule and why delays might be happening. You know, all of this is going to be, you know, really important documentation for you to be able to go back and have. Um, but we think that these areas, especially the project logging, photographs, um, RFIs and change orders are really your big you know, if you're thinking of, well, where do I start? I would say start with photos. Um, start just by adding pictures into the project. Document everything. Um, add in project logging. You know, like these are easy tools to work with and just provide such a, an amazing, you know, layer of protection over the project. In addition to helping make, you know, your day-to-day -day life easier while you're managing it. Um, but sometimes a year down the road, you're still using the information that's in there. Well, I mean, or multiple years down the road. I guess in conclusion, um, to really kind of tie all of these pieces of information together, there was a client I was working with a couple of months ago uh, who um, four years after the conclusion of a project uh, was, was you know, trying to track down information uh, about one specific element of the project. Uh, I'm not really sure how much I can share about this. Well, let's just say um, a city inspector had come out and, and at some point had said, yes, this is correct for something with the building. Um, and they ended up finding a log of the inspector's visit where they had actually you know, taken his document where he signed off and said, yes, this was correct. Uh, when in fact it was absolutely not correct and, and had been uh, a problem for four plus years at that point. Uh, and that saved them uh, probably a, a massive, massive issue for mm -hmm. uh, all sorts of uh, well, they would have been on the hook for EPA violations, we'll put it yeah. that way. Um, and, and all it took was uh, just, you know, really simple, you know, boots to the ground efforts to make sure that they were taking pictures of different documents and keeping track of uh, 
important elements of the project, mm-hmm. but it's, it's really not, not as difficult as it seems it might be. Yeah. Well, and the great thing about that is if you're documenting everything, then because you really can't predict what documentation you might need in the future. So if you just kind of get in the habit of documenting everything, then you know, whenever something is required, you're going to, you know, you're going to have it at hand. Um, You mentioned inspections and it kind of made me think about things like the checklist and the punch list, which provide not only a way to get through those inspections if you've got a list of things that need to be checked off or like in this case we've got an OSHA inspection checklist and so if you're looking at it from kind of a compliance or safety standpoint you can go through and check these items off but even better when you get to the end of this then you're going to be able to go ahead and again back to those signatures have someone whether that's you or someone that you're working with sign off on it this is a monster checklist so I'm trying to imagine how I would keep track of this by hand you know I'm not even sure how I'd be able to do that but um you could you come to the end everything's been checked off then you can go ahead and gather those signatures so that you know just like your story Jordan you know a year down the road someone says well this wasn't right well here on this day, you actually signed and said that it was. So, you know, you've, you've got some sort of documentation on your side. Um, one thing before we wrap up today, you guys, and we, we've gone a few minutes over, but really love this topic and hope that you've um, learned something valuable today or, or gotten some new ideas about how you might put um, some of the tools and construction online in place and, and put those to work for you protecting your company. We do have some new workshops coming up over the next uh, couple of months and I hope that you're able to join us for those. There are some great sessions introducing new features to you guys. Things like um, a brand new option for uh, or, or a new and improved option for importing Google Maps into Construction Online and into Redline. Um, You can even import a map view in and then scale that to your takeoff and start doing some measurements. It's a really, really nice way to to kind of work within the plan room and takeoff tools. Um, We'll also be looking at uh, five mistakes unsuccessful builders make and how you can avoid them. So we hear a lot of great stories. We hear a lot of scary stories as well. So we wanna take what we've learned Um, and share with you some things that, uh, mistakes we think you can avoid that will will kind of improve your day-to-day business. We wanna look at a brand new lead timeline view in Construction Online. I'm super excited to share this. It is a wonderful addition to our CRM lineup. Um, We'll also look at how you can conquer the three most common uh, objections to software adoption by your team. Shine the spotlight on a new feature for customizable tax settings within your estimates and financial tools, as well as some new channel options in Envoy Chat. So we've been hard at work here working on new features for you guys. So a lot of great sessions coming up highlighting those. Um, So we do hope to, to see you at one of those coming up soon. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, really, really happy and excited to uh, share uh, some of the lessons we've learned along the way from really our clients and, and our work to provide the best project management platform we possibly can. Uh, so thank you all again for joining us today, and hopefully we'll see you next week when we're looking at what all you can do with fancy multi-million dollar satellite images. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Have a great afternoon.